it will be impossible to enumerate all or even a small part of the experiments which were made by Dr. Franklin. But justice requires us to say that he seldom wrote or discoursed on any subject upon which he did not throw light. Few men possessed more penetrating genius or a happier faculty of discrimination. Benjamin Franklin. Benjamin Franklin. Benjamin Franklin. Benjamin Franklin was born in Boston, Massachusetts on January 17, 1706. His father, Josiah Franklin, was a soap and a candle maker and had 17 children. And Benjamin was the 15th child and the last son. At an early age, he soon had a reputation of respectable genius, but his parents couldn't afford the expenses of college and so they kept him home to do his father's business. He made candles for two years, but became so bored. He wanted to go and get a job on a ship so that he could be on the sea. His parents kind of hated that idea since they had already lost one son to the sea. When Benjamin was just 12 years old, his father apprenticed him to his elder brother in 1717, who was a printer. Being around so many books, he soon began writing. At age 16, Benjamin asked his brother to pay him half the cost to board him, and he would board himself, using the leftover money to purchase the books that he wanted. Well, since his brother had a newspaper, the New England Current, Benjamin published his first article there anonymously in 1721 and he adopted the pseudonym Miss Silence Duguid. Her 14 imaginative and witty letters were highly commended by the people with the best judgment and the best taste in town, which caused Benjamin to feel his importance. But his brother James was angry when he discovered that these letters were Benjamin's. Since James was a harsh taskmaster and treated Benjamin poorly, Ben was determined to leave. He secretly boarded a ship and made his way to Philadelphia where he arrived tired with no money and only 17 years old. Benjamin wandered through the streets of the city and his ragged appearance got him noticed by many, including the woman who would be his wife. He obtained employment in one of the two printing offices in Philadelphia. The governor also noticed him and became interested in his welfare and cared for him. The governor urged him to return back to Boston, which Benjamin did, and came to the house of his father and was affectionately received by his family. The governor proposed Franklin to go to England and to purchase the necessary materials for a printing establishment. Benjamin accepted that offer with much gratitude, and he sailed for England in 1725. Upon arriving in England, he learned, however, the governor had tricked him. His letter and the credit were worthless. So he became an apprentice again to earn the money that he was going to need. He learned the good and the evil that life had to offer, and he chose to write and influence his friends that a warm and a nourishing breakfast was better than the stimulating liquors." Unquote. Well, after a year and a half in London, he came home to Philadelphia late in 1726. Franklin returned only to find that Deborah Reed, whom he had promised to marry upon his return, had already gotten married. Well, in the next few years, he held a variety of jobs such as bookkeeper, shopkeeper, currency cutter, and Franklin was finally able to set up his own shop as a printer and started a new public paper. And because of his skill as a writer and printer, it caused the paper to succeed. He was also able to take Deborah Reed as his wife in 1730 after her husband disappeared. Franklin's prominence and success grew in the 1730s with the publication of Poor Richard's Almanac at the end of 1732, which continued for 25 years. In 1744, the French War, he proposed a plan of voluntary association for the defense of the country. He was shortly joined by 10,000 who were trained in using weapons. Franklin was chosen as the colonel, but 
He refused in favor of being a member of the Provincial Assembly, where he was re-elected for the next 10 years. Benjamin was elected to the Pennsylvania Assembly in 1751 and served as an agent for Pennsylvania to England, France, and three other European powers. He was elected to the Continental Congress in 1775, where he played a crucial role in the rebellion against Great Britain and in editing the Declaration of Independence. Franklin was celebrated throughout Europe, welcomed in any royal court, sought out by prestigious societies. Indeed, Franklin was worshipped wherever his name was known. In 1757 to 1762, Franklin returned to England once more. He was granted $5,000 and a seat in the Provincial Assembly of Pennsylvania in gratitude for all that he had accomplished on that trip. In 1766 and 67, he made an excursion to Holland, Germany, and France, where he met with the most flattering and distinguished reception. He met Louis XV and was introduced to other members of the royal family, where he was treated with great hospitality and courtesy. He was elected as a member of the French Academy of Sciences. In 1775, Franklin was elected to the Second Continental Congress and as a postmaster general for the colonies, having mapped the postal routes in 1762. And in 1776, he was one of the five men to draft the Declaration of Independence on July 4th, 1776. Franklin was finally able to sign the document at the age of 70. He was the oldest signer. After almost a decade in France, Franklin returned back home to America in 1785 and was welcomed home with the ringing of bells, the discharge of artillery, and the acclamations of thousands. He often spoke of this time with great pleasure. In fact, he said, quote, I am now in the bosom of my family, and I find four new little prattlers who cling about the knees of their grandpapa and afford me great pleasure. I am surrounded by my friends, and I have an affectionate good daughter and son-in-law to take care of me. I have got into my niche a very good house, which I built 24 years ago, and out of which I have been ever since kept by foreign employments." Unquote. <laughs> he didn't get to stay there long, as he was appointed president of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, an office that he held for three years. During the Federal Convention of 1787, he was elected as a delegate. He bore a distinguished part in organizing the Constitution of the United States. Benjamin Franklin died on April 17, 1790, in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, at the home of his daughter, Sarah Batch. He was 84. He suffered from gout and had complained about his declining health for quite some time. Franklin had actually written his epitaph when he was 22 years old. Here it is, the body of B. Franklin, printer. Like the cover of an old worn out book, its contents torn out and stripped of its lettering and gilding lies here, food for worms, but the work shall not be lost, for it will, as he believed, appear once more in a new and more elegant edition, revised and corrected by the author. In his will, he directed no monumental ornaments should be placed upon his tomb, a small marble slab only, and that too on the level with the surface of the earth, bearing the name of himself and his wife and the year of his death. That is what marks the spot in the yard where he lies, which simply reads, Benjamin and Deborah Franklin, 1790. Congress directed a general mourning for him throughout the United States for the space of a month. The National Assembly of France testified their sense of loss, which the world sustained by decreeing that each member should wear mourning for three days. This was an honor perhaps never before paid by the National Assembly of one country to the citizen of another country. Reverend Charles Augustus Goodrich writes of Benjamin Franklin, 
In the early part of his life, he acknowledged himself to have been skeptical in religion, but he became in maturer years, according to the testimony of his intimate friend, Dr. William Smith, a believer in divine revelation. The following extract from his memoirs, written by himself, deserves to be recorded here, and I quote, Here let me with all humility acknowledge that to divine providence I am indebted for the felicity I have hitherto enjoyed. It is that power alone which has furnished me with the means that I have employed and that has crowned them with success. My faith in this respect leads me to hope, though I cannot count on it, that the divine goodness will still be exercised towards me, either by prolonging the duration of my happiness to the close of my life, or by giving me the fortitude to support any melancholy reverse which may happen to me as well as to many others. My future fortune is unknown but to him, in whose hand is our destiny, and who can make our very afflictions subservient to our benefit. With so many of America's heroes, successes seem to always take the spotlight, while failures are rarely mentioned. Dr. Franklin said, do not fear mistakes, you will know failure. Continue to reach out. Benjamin Franklin took his own advice and he explored many, many professions. Businessman, writer, publisher, scientist, diplomat, legislator, soldier at the age of 42, a social activist. He mapped the Gulf Stream, invented swim fins, and created the first American public library and the first American fire station. Founding universities and libraries, the post office, shaping foreign policy for our fledgling United States, drafting the Declaration of Independence, publishing newspapers, warming us with the Franklin stove, and inventing chimneys, pioneering advances in science, letting us see with bifocals, and yes, even lighting our way with electricity and the invention of the lightning rod. He invented musical instruments such as the harmonica, and his last public act was to sign a memorial to Congress recommending the abolition of slavery, all from a man who never finished school, but shaped his life through the abundant reading and experience, a strong moral compass, and an unfledgling commitment to civic duty and an overall wit, good humor, and integrity. His self-education earned him honorary degrees from Harvard, Yale, Oxford in England, and St. Andrews in Scotland. What more can you say about a man like that? I have loved learning about Benjamin Franklin. And in fact, I have a story for you. Here in Reverend Charles Augustus Goodrich's book, he tells about an experiment that Benjamin Franklin does on his mother. Click the link below, I'll tell you the story. The end.